From Nutrient Ag Solutions, I'm Senior Atmospheric Scientist Andrew Pritchard with your Morning Minute for Wednesday, November 27th, 2024. Before I get started, no forecast video tomorrow, no forecast video on Friday as we celebrate the Thanksgiving uh, holiday. So I'll do my best to kind of tee you up for the next four to five days here before we talk again next Monday morning. So three things to know here early this morning. Holiday travel weather looks good in most areas. We've got pockets of some snow in the central Rockies here over the next 12 to 24 hours. And then we'll be looking for some snow in the northeast as we head into the weekend. Otherwise, windy in the southern plains. We've got some fog this morning across parts of the southeast. Again, pockets of snow through the weekend. We'll talk about that here. Some light snow in some areas and then heavy snow where we got some lake effect enhancement across the Great Lakes in the northeast. And then we'll be talking about a few storms in the southeast beginning later on today through the day Thursday and then into early Friday morning. Again, the current hazards map, winter storm warnings in the Rockies right now, winter weather advisories there in the front range, and then high wind warnings across portions of the southern plains as this area of low pressure begins to ramp up across the region. That'll be kind of ramping down over the next 24 to 48 hours across that region. Again, some fog across the southeast, and then winter storm watches in parts of the northeast right now as we kind of prepare for a snowy weekend in those areas. Severe weather outlook, marginal risk today across parts of Mississippi and Alabama, the Florida Panhandle into southern Georgia. We expand that during the day on Thursday, but that moves off on Friday. Just a couple of thunderstorms possible uh, across the Florida Peninsula during the afternoon on Friday. Looking at the infrared satellite picture here early on Wednesday morning, a lot to see. We've got this first low wrapping up across the Hudson Bay and the Great Lakes here, beginning this big pattern change. Very strong jet stream winds coming in across the Rockies again, winter storm warnings, high wind warnings across the southern plains there. Uh, with this storm system developing, we'll kind of triggering an area of, area of low pressure here across the, uh, the panhandle that's going to then lift in. Uh, across the uh, the Ozarks into the Ohio Valley and then eventually the Northeast over the next 48 hours. And then we've also got this little swirl up here in the Canadian Prairie. You see the purple shading here. That is very cold air uh, along with our snowpack across the prairie. And there's another wave here across British Columbia and Alberta that's going to be diving in and just kind of helping to further wrap up this area of low pressure, this upper level low across the Hudson Bay and the Great Lakes. You see it here. We've been talking about this the last three days. As we kind of watch these one, two, three, four different pieces come together over the next 48 hours, and then we'll build this big ridge in across the western US. So here's the pattern transformation. This is Thursday, getting into Friday again. Here's that chance for some light snow across the eastern Corn Belt, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, mixed in with some rain and some thunderstorms across the southeast. This is the, the next little kicker that comes in over the weekend helps just kind of wrap this thing up could bring in some reinforcing flurries as little disturbances then ride this northwest flow through the prairie into the northern plains and then down into uh the mid mississippi valley the upper midwest the great lakes we'll be bringing in reinforcing shots of cold dry air squeezing some moisture out of that with some of the little lift associated with those waves that we could kick off some flurries so we, we kind of get into a, a very cold dry potentially at times flurry -y pattern across the corn belt Here's the jet stream winds just screaming from west to east across the US. And so zonal right now, but headed toward a very amplified pattern over the next few days. This is what we got as we get into early next week. So now we've got this big upper level low. We've got the strongest jet stream winds rounding the base of that low. And then we've got little short waves kind of coming over the top of the ridge in the west, wrapping around this low. So each one of these, you know, potentially brings a shot of some flurries, maybe some windy conditions, reinforcing shot of some cold air at times across the Corn Belt. So buckle up, cold start to December. And I do think this is gonna last through much of the month. I still think, you know, probably one of the coldest Decembers across the Corn Belt in the last 10 years or so. Here's the moisture that we're talking about. Uh, at times, you'll see this little feed coming up with the uh, wave over the next 48 hours. A little bit of Gulf moisture coming in to feed those thunderstorms across the southeast, that rain across the Ohio Valley, cold air on the north side, maybe changing over some of that precipitation to snow late today into tonight. Big cold front comes in, shot of cold, dry air. We squeeze all the moisture back south over the Gulf of Mexico. So here's that big front. Again, by the time we get to Saturday, just a couple storms possible across the uh, Florida Peninsula. Otherwise, we got cold, dry air in most of the, uh, the U.S. east of the Rockies. Keep it cold and dry heading into early next week. And then as we get deeper into next week, we'll start to see, again, ridge west, trough east, 
start to see some of this jet stream flow coming over the top of the ridge. The prairie is going to start to ramp up with more in the way of winter precipitation as we get into next week. And then I think deeper into next week, we'll see some of these systems kind of again rotating around the base of that trough, bringing in shots of snow, maybe some corridors of overperforming snow. There's one kind of being flirted with here on the Euro as we get into uh, early next week, maybe diving in across parts of uh, the Midwest, bringing some snow. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now, really, the pattern as we head deeper on into December, we'll be watching really the placement here of these big features. Very amplified pattern. This ridge across the west, does it begin to slink back to the west over the Pacific? Does it kind of hold firm here right now? I, I think through mid-December, it's going to hold pretty, form, uh, pretty firm. You know, we're going to see some fluctuations here, but I think this is really our background state over the next two weeks or so. One that's going to feature, you know, an active Canadian prairie, at times clipper systems diving out of the prairie, bringing us cold Arctic air and some snow across the northern plains, the upper Midwest into the central and eastern Corn Belt. It's going to be, you know, a drier, colder pattern as we look at total precipitation, but I think the flurries may be frequent across the area. So here's what we got then. Next three days, the NAM model. We'll bring it on back here to Wednesday morning. Again, the winter storm ongoing across the Rockies. We'll start to see this precipitation expanding across uh, the Ohio Valleys we get into later on today. This is kind of sunset Wednesday evening, light rain spreading into Illinois and Indiana, starting to get into southern Ohio. Maybe a couple rumbles of thunder later on in the overnight here across parts of the Mid-South. Let's take it on into the overnight. This is about midnight. This is when we could see some of this precipitation from central and eastern Illinois into central Indiana, northern and central Ohio, parts of western and northern Pennsylvania. Maybe turn over to snow, maybe mixing with snow in some areas here. Eastern Illinois into central Indiana, I think accumulations are going to be pretty uh, rare. Maybe someone getting a light coating here. And as you get further off into uh, central Indiana, northern and central Ohio, maybe a, a, an inch or two in some areas. And then better chances for accumulation as we head on into uh, New England and the northeast. So here it is getting into Thursday morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Pretty quiet for most of us. Flurries in the northern high plains. Maybe a couple of thunderstorms in the southeast. The trouble spot is the northeast where we've got heavier snow and heavier rain. So a, uh, an active Thanksgiving in the northeast, quiet most other areas, quiet albeit cold in a lot of the other areas here. This is your Thursday night. Let's take it on into Friday. This is now Friday evening, Friday night. This is when this upper level low begins to wrap up. We start to bring some cold air in over the top of the Great Lakes. We'll get some corridors of very heavy lake effect snow going now across the the northeast the upper midwest michigan could see some of that as well coming off of lake michigan so we really quiet down as we head deeper into the weekend and kind of turn our attention to maybe clippers coming out of the prairie bringing some flurries across the northern plains into the midwest and then that lake effect snow across the northeast how much snow across the ohio valley again we kind of continue to just look at Precipitation may be changing over, mixing into snow, maybe a quick inch or two. I think some of these higher totals, like you see in the top right with the NAM model, uh, you know, getting to that four to six range, I think that's that's overdone. I think we're probably looking at more at like the top left on the HER and then the bottom right here from the European model, which is, you know, a couple isolated areas are going to wake up tomorrow morning with some, you know, white stuff on the ground there, a couple pockets of a, a light coating to an inch. By and large, I think it's going to be rain mixing with snow across the eastern Corn Belt. We'll take it a little longer uh, range to look here with the European model. Again, this is your Wednesday active weather here as this area of low pressure emerges across the uh, the panhandles. It begins to lift into the Ohio Valley. This is this evening now, about 6 p.m. Central this evening, getting into the overnight. And then let's take it into Thursday morning. So happy Thanksgiving again. Snowy across the northeast, rainy in the mid-Atlantic, maybe a little bit rumbly in the southeast. And then turn our attention to these clippers coming in on the back side little shots of flurries this is what we've got friday morning lake effect snow kicking up across the northeast take it into uh saturday this is or i'm sorry friday night into saturday this is now saturday afternoon saturday evening getting a chance for some light flurries here across uh, parts of the mid mississippi valley let's take this a little bit further here get my cursor going again this will be saturday night into sunday morning here's the one i'm talking about early next week just a little disturbance just enough to squeeze some of the you know what little moisture there is out of it now again these can be efficient snow uh you know accumulators is what i'm trying to get out here they don't have a lot of moisture to work with but it's a very dry fluffy snow so you hit one of these right you can get a quick coating to a couple of inches and maybe that's something we're talking about in the mid mississippi valley on monday morning by the time i get to uh recording the next video so across the corn belt it is going to be a cold thanksgiving weekend at times, some flurries moving into the area. 
And then as we get into early next week, watch for some shower and storm activity to start slowly lifting into parts of uh, coastal Texas, maybe over toward coastal Louisiana as well. Total snow through the weekend. Again, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, maybe a corridor of a trace to an inch or two. Heavier snow across the northeast, especially as we ramp up that lake effect snow business. You see the little clipper trying to dive out of the Canadian prairie, bringing a quick coating to a couple of inches across the northern plains. We may watch for that to make its way into the Midwest, parts of the mid-Mississippi Valley as we get into early next week as well. And then also the chance for some flurries over the weekend. Maybe, again, a light coating in some areas of the Ozarks into the central plains. Not talking at any, about uh, you know any large corridors of significant snowfall. I'll add in here the rest of the European run from the overnight. Here you go. That little clipper tries to zip in. Added it in for fun. I've got low confidence in this actually happening, at least in this exact fashion. But it's, it's something to watch, and I think it's reflective of the pattern heading into the first half of December, which is going to be pretty Arctic-like across the, the Corn Belt. Very cold, dry air at times, some flurries. Does this last through the rest of December? We'll have to kind of watch the position of that ridge, how things you know kind of fluctuate. But I, I think right now the trend is in favor of a very cold December across the Corn Belt, across the Northeast and the Great Lakes, uh, with more mild conditions, potentially record warm at times across the Southwest and Western US drier out there as well. Let's touch quickly on the Southeast here. I'm making this video a little longer than I had intended here this morning, but again, just wanna kinda set you up for my absence over the next four days. Let's talk about the Southeast severe weather risk. No changes in my thoughts if you watched the video yesterday. Again, as we get into the later part of the day today, We'll start to bring in some of this moisture and instability across parts of Louisiana and Mississippi, the Florida Panhandle. This is now overnight into uh, Thursday morning. Again, this is, you know, not nothing. This is rather marginal instability, marginal, uh, you know, moisture return. And then the other thing that kind of knocks my, you know, confidence in a real prolific severe weather day down is kind of the misalignment of our ingredients. So we look for fuel for those storms, that moisture, the instability, and then we also look for wind shear, upper level support to kind of get these storms either organized or rotating and increase the longevity of that. And so as we get into Wednesday evening, the instability, that tongue starting to lift into Louisiana, parts of Mississippi, right along the lower Mississippi Valley. Meanwhile, the area of low pressure and the low level jet is already well off to the northeast across parts of Kentucky and Tennessee and then northern Mississippi and Alabama. And then as I take it into Thursday afternoon, it's even more displaced. Now the cold front very much oriented kind of from, from northeast to southwest. You see it stretching there from the Carolinas down toward the Florida Panhandle. The area of low pressure, the low level jet is already offshore at this point, you know, well off to the north and to the east. So certainly it's a sharp cold front. And so we've got a little bit of moisture, we have a little fuel, and we've got a sharp cold front enough to kind of get the air lifted, get some thunderstorms going, but then we don't have the jet stream support to kind of take it to that next level to where I'm really concerned about widespread significant thunderstorms. So I, I agree with the Storm Prediction Center, their marginal risk that says, hey, we're looking at scattered storms. A couple of these could become strong, producing some damaging winds, uh, maybe some large hail. Not likely that we're going to see tornadoes out of this, but you know, can't rule one or two out if we're talking about the potential for a couple strong storms. Again, looking something like this, just getting started here later on this afternoon into the evening as that cold front starts to meet up with the moisture. Again, the moisture starts to lift northward late in the day today into tonight. The cold front starts to sink into the area late today into tonight. So those finally combine then during the overnight the best upper level lift well off to the northeast. That's why you see widespread you know, rain, maybe a couple rumbles of thunder as you head off to the north. So the upper level support kicking off a lot of precipitation off to the north, and then the cold front and just a little bit of instability kicking off a narrow band of showers and storms uh, along that front in the southeast. So this is just, you know, the model output, not all that impressive. And, and I concur there uh, because the, the setup is just, it's not all there in the way that we would expect it to be in a more significant severe weather day. Total precip then through early next week. Again, that first little wave that comes through over the next you know Wednesday night to Thursday morning across the Ohio Valley, we're looking at a swath of maybe a few tenths of an inch up to a half an inch. Maybe some of that falls as some light snow. You make your way further south and east. We're talking about hit or miss showers and storms. So some folks completely dry. I'll just getting a few tenths. If you end up under one of these thunderstorms, maybe you get upwards of an inch and then much heavier precipitation in some narrow pockets across the northeast parts of the Great Lakes as we talk about lake effect snow in those areas. And then 
getting into next week, we could look for a corridor of maybe some heavier rain across coastal areas of Texas and Louisiana with some showers and storms. And then finally, the Canadian Prairie into the Northern High Plains. Look for those chances for flurries, generally light precipitation, but cold flurries possible. Again, as we head into mid-December, we'll be watching this ridge. Does it set up here, uh, you know, semi-permanently heading into mid-December? Uh, you know, what's the impact of some of these lows that try to come in? Do we kind of erode that? Do we eventually bring in cooler temperatures and precipitation across the prairie? Uh, you know, the position of the ridge also impacts whether or not we actually get one of these more significant snowstorms to ramp up across the Ohio Valley into the Northeast. So certainly it's possible as we get into mid to late December, we see this pattern change up. But right now it is looking pretty locked in, very highly amplified, a highly amplified pattern that is going to be prone to getting stuck as we head into the mid late part of the month. Uh, so right now, my message across the Corn Belt is cold with flurries at times as we head through much of the month of December. You see the temperature forecast here as we just kind of wrap this thing up, I'll let you go head on into your Thanksgiving. Look at those overnight lows here as this first shot of really cold air, the season comes in. Overnight lows tonight, and then let's take it on into uh, Friday night, Saturday night. As we head into the weekend, you see some of this cold air. Sub-zero overnight lows across uh, the Northern Plains teens across the midwest into the ohio valley 20s and 30s all the way down to the gulf coast winter is here we will be feeling the effects of a very uh wintry pattern across areas east of the rockies i keep wanting to say the corn belt but it is it's the corn belt it's the south and it's the whole of the eastern u.s folks on the west especially in the southwest enjoy your very mild start to the month of december i hope you have a great thanksgiving safe travels to those of you who are on the road i will talk to you again uh, on monday morning